Hey everyone and welcome to my studio. I am really excited because I think I've got a series coming on. And I thought about it, I was on the plane coming home from the uh, IAPS pastel convention. I thought, oh I got a great idea for a series. You know how we have piles of paintings that are just not working? And we think, you know what, I ought to just throw this out. But then again, it's a good piece of paper. So you don't want to throw it out and you don't want to waste paper. So maybe you can fix it. So I thought, how about a new series, fix it or trash it? So I'm going to take a painting and I'm going to decide, am I going to fix it or am I going to just throw it away? And of course I'm going to try to fix it, but I want to invite you along so that you can watch and see how I can resurrect or salvage a painting that's gone bad. So let's take a look at the first contender for fix it or trash it. My first inclination was trash it. I worked this painting to death. I can't tell you how many layers I added and I kept adding things and adding things and it just wasn't working. The composition isn't working. I couldn't get the feeling of light in the forest that I was after. So I didn't throw it out because it's on it's nice sanded uh, mounted paper and you know they cost a few dollars. I don't want to throw it out. So I set it aside and I thought you know what let's not throw it out but let's try to fix it. So I'm going to show you a really fun technique to help salvage a painting that has gone bad. And you know sometimes it's not what we add to a painting to make it better but it's what we take away. So I'm going to take away some pastel right now. I'm going to use an old really crummy brush and I'm going to scrub away as much pastel as I can. Now if you have a lot of thick pastel, I would recommend that you do this step outside. And at least you do it upright so that the pastel dust will just fall down. And I have a piece of foam core, uh, coated foam core, to cut, collect the dust. I call this the gutter, and I always use a gutter. So I'm just going to scrub away a lot of this old pastel. I'm trying to remove the thicker layers so that I have more tooth to work with. And you're never going to get it clean. You could wash it under a sink or a hose. I've done that and had success. But I want to show you something different today. Going away. So I think I've scrubbed out enough. Oh, it's looking better already. <laughs> it really is. All right, but I'm going to have some fun with this painting and I want to add a little texture. So what I'm going to do is take some clear gesso. This is Liquitex clear gesso. Now you don't want to use color gesso, you don't want to use white gesso, you want to use the clear gesso because it has a little bit of grittiness to it. I'm going to pour some into my jar. You can tell where I collect my ice, my, my oh, ice cream Fanatic, so I like to use ice cream containers. That's a good excuse for getting the ice cream because I need the containers. Now it is, it looks white, but it will dry clear. I'm using a cheap brush from the hardware store. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just paint it on in very random brush strokes because I want to create some texture. So you could do it nice and smooth like this. You can actually make it look like canvas weave, but I want that rough texture. Now what's happening is I am liquefying the pastel that is remaining on the board. So it's basically turning that pastel, that pigment into uh, liquid paint and it will dry clear so you will actually see this color. So basically all I'm doing with the clear gesso is I'm creating a toned surface, I'm eliminating the clutter of the previous painting, and by using these random free freestyle brush strokes, I am getting a really nice textured surface to respond to. I'm going to go ahead and just finish this up, and of course we're going to have to wait for it to dry in order to do the next part of the painting. Now while it is drying, just about finished here, while it is drying, what I normally do when I'm doing these fix it or trash it paintings, is I'll go through my reference photos. I have over 50,000 reference photos. So this is one from my trip to Ireland and trip to Iceland. So I went through 
And I happen to find one, I'm going to stick it up here, that I think is going to work for this nice kind of gray, middle gray with some dark uh, areas. I think it'll work really well. I might have to flip this whole board over, but this is a nice meadow. This is Ireland, and you can see the green, and you can see the sea in the distance. So I think it's going to work out really, really lovely for this new, improved surface. So we'll let this dry, and I'll be right back. All right, I, I am back. I would say it probably took a little over an hour to dry, but look at what we have. We have this really wonderful, rich, dark, kind of uh, mysterious underpainting to respond to and it has a little texture because of the clear gesso. So depending on how thick you put the clear gesso will determine how long it takes to dry. But this took about a, an hour. Now well, I went ahead and I selected a photo over here from my stash that I thought would fit what's happening here. So I think I've got this nice dark shape of a bush right here. I've got some darks down here underneath and a little bit of C and I think it's going to work. So I went ahead and I drew in the big shapes first. And the whole way that I like to work is work from big simple shapes down to small tiny details. So we start, I like to keep it as big and simple for as long as I possibly can. And I'm going to, I need my towel to keep my pastels clean, which I forgot to grab. Thank you. So, first things first. With pastel, we start from dark to light, so I'm going to block in all of the dark shapes. And when I squint at my photo, I see that the dark shape, one of the dark shapes, happens to be the bush and a little bit on the ground. So I'm going to use a dark purple and block in that nice big dark bush. And I'm going to block in a sort of dark pathway leading to the bush. I'm going to use a dark purple all the way to the bottom of the painting. And you can start to see how the, the texture is allowing the pastel to skip and make go over the grooves and make interesting texture. And I've got a lot of grasses and interesting things happening, so I think it's going to lend itself. The texture is going to work for me. I'm adding another layer of dark. This is a dark burgundy. The reason why I'm doing this is because, yes, it's green and brown, but I want it to be more interesting than just green and brown. So I'm layering several dark colors before I get to the green and brown. How about one more color? How about a dark, rusty color? That always works well when you have a lot of green and golden grasses. Look at how the texture, you see how this, the pastel is scooping over this area and creating, it looks like a fence. That is part of the underpainting, um, the way the paper dried. Alright, so we have three layers. Let's go ahead and add some dark green to the green bushy shape. And I don't want to press so hard that I cover up all the layers of color that I'm starting to establish. The whole idea is that we can get some interesting mixes of color or blends of color that our eye will optically blend together. So there's some dark green, a little bit of dark cool green in the shadowed areas, and down here at the base. Now, those are all the darks in place. The next thing that I'm going to do is refine this tree shape a little bit more so I can put in the light areas which happen to be the sky. So let's go ahead and add some sunlight to our bush. So I'm going to use a warmer, kind of a yellowy green, and hit this bush with a little bit of sunlight and that'll help give it a little bit of shape or volume. I think I could hit it with another, no that's too light. One thing that I didn't talk about is that I'm working from a pastel palette that I have pre-selected. So I am not working from a huge box of pastels, rather I have a smaller selection from my big box. And this is just allows me to keep a nice limited palette and allows me to paint a lot faster and actually more what I would like to call, if, oops, that guy jumped out of my hand, more efficiently. All right, so there's my bush. Now let's go ahead and paint the sky. And in, in my photo, the sky was kind of a overcast blue, not really a bright blue sky. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a light blue. 
kind of a dull blue. Again, you can see the texture. And I know sometimes people are afraid to use their nice soft pastels on a really textured surface because they're afraid it's going to eat up the pastel. And it does to a certain extent, but really not enough to make me stop doing it. Actually goes a lot further than you think. So I'm using several shades of blue and a nice blue violet. But one thing that I'm noticing is that because of the texture, it's making the sky look really rough. And I want to have a nice smooth, uh, kind of a peaceful sky. I'm going to add a pink down in there. And then let's add a pale yellow at the horizon. So I have all these colors in the sky, but it's too uh, rough looking. So I'm going to take my piece of pipe insulation foam and push that pastel into the groove and creating a, a smoother, softer, more mysterious sky. Now I don't usually like to blend in a top layer, so what I'm going to do is take those same colors that I used and go back over it just to add some fresh pastel marks. So I'm going to take that blue. I'm also carving into the tree or bush shape just to make it have a more interesting silhouette. So I'm creating some sky holes with the sky color. And then it's lighter at the horizon. Now, there is a little bit of water in here, and we have to make sure that the water is completely flat and level, or it won't look like water, it'll look like rolling land. So I'm going to go ahead and put in that first layer of the sea, and the sea was a little bit lighter than that, so I'm going to go over it. Oh, it's too light. Here we go. And I'm going to take my pinky finger, and I'm going to just smudge it at the horizon. And then that way we get a little bit more atmosphere so it really looks like it's receding into the distance. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is work on all the foreground, all the grasses and stuff. So I have to first, what I like to say is I want to lay down some dirt. I want to put down some colors that would, there's going to be a lot of green and a lot of yellow. So by putting down colors before I get to the green and yellow, it actually is going to make that more interesting. So I'll put down some violets. A little red violet. The other nice thing about adding some violets down here for the, what I call the dirt color is that I put some violet up in the sky and so that really allows there to be sort of a visual connection between what's happening in the sky and then what's happening on the ground. So anytime I can add a color to the sky that is already up in the ground, it really helps connect the two What's the matter? You see, up, up in the ground. Up in the ground. <laughs> oh, you scared me. I'm just talking, and then, you know, sometimes I don't know what words are coming out of my mouth. So, yes, yeah, so what's happening in the sky should connect to what's happening on the ground. There we go. And you can see the purple is talking to the purple in the sky. And that's what I'm striving for. Now I have some dirt in place. I'm going to start with the very distant green. And it looks like, it's really interesting, that there seems to be little smaller bushes in the distance. So I'm going to just go ahead and suggest these. And the fun thing about it is that they're so far back that there's no detail in them. And I'm going to lay in some of the grass. And the grass in the distance is, go in the distance is going to be put in with horizontal flat marks because I want it to lay flat and we wouldn't see the detail way in the distance. There's one thing that I really love about this photo because this happens to be Ireland and there's this really bright green area of grass back there. So I'm going to go ahead and sneak that in around those bushes. Now I don't want a lot of detail here because remember it's in the distance. But some of that bright green does make its way down here into the foreground and I'm just going to put little hints of it. Alright, so now we're working our way down. We have some of these darker green bushy things. All kinds of scrub. I love doing this part, this foreground part, because the, 
the challenge is to make it interesting without putting in a lot of detail. Like I don't want to have to paint every blade of grass and every bush and every flower. I want to just merely suggest it. And so that is the challenging part. Let's see. Let's start with some of the bushes kind of coming up in this middle distance. And we have some kind of golden grasses. Okay. Sticking up. And notice what I've been doing so far is I have just been blocking in those big simple shapes, right? Now I'm refining those shapes by adding more detail and adding more uh, finishing touches. Keeping things big and simple for as long as I can, but now comes the moment of truth where I have to actually start refining my shapes. I want to lead the viewer's eye up to this tree up here, up, or, or bush shape, and I have to do that by the, the direction that I make my marks, the type of marks that I make, and the details, where I put the contrast. So I'm going to do one quick thing so that I can get more texture in the grass. I'll show you this in a second. I'm spraying this foreground area and the tree, or bush, with some workable fixative. And I'll show you what it is in just a second. I'm also making it spray in a bad way. Like I'm making little, like this would be terrible if you sp sprayed your painting with this, this is Blair Very Low Odor Spray Fix. But I want this because I want it to look like this illusion of grasses and things growing. And now watch what happens when I take my green and I go over this fixed area. The dark stays in place but I get a feeling of texture and grasses. Oops. I think I need to refine some of the branches in this bush. It was a big simple shape and now I have to make it read more, have a little bit more detail. Not a lot, just a little bit more, that's better. And then what I really loved about this photo was the yellow flowers. So I want to come in and put in some of those yellow weedy flowers. I'm going to start with a pale warm yellow. Still big simple shapes and I liked how they were just growing along the edge of this little hillside. There was a little few of them over here. And now I'm going to take a brighter yellow. This is a much softer pastel and I'm going to push it in pretty hard because this is where I really want you to see the bright colors of these yellow flowers. This is a cooler yellow, but I like to mix in with a warm yellow. So when I paint yellow flowers, mixing the warm and the cool sometimes makes them come alive. And I think that we need to have a, just a few of them right under here, and maybe a little bit over here, just so that we kind of pull your eye over to this tree shape. And I can really press hard with this as a very soft pastel, just so that I can get a lot more texture. The final thing that I do to this painting is paint some individual blades of grass. So I take some hard pastels, and these happen to be new pastels, and I'm simply going to scribble until I get some broken lines to indicate some of those grasses. The grasses are blowing in the wind, so I'm just kind of, this is a lot of fun really, to just come in there and create some broken lines and some linear marks to suggest the grasses in this very, very busy grassy area. Pull some over coming from the right, pull the eye into the painting by the way I make my marks. Now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to stop. I always stop before I think I'm completely done so I can evaluate where I'm at and then I'll come back and add some finishing touches and then I'll be finished with it. Alright, so I have added a lot more detail and I'm about to put the finishing mark with this really bright electric green and I'm going to just pull your eye up into this area by using a few little marks of this really bright green. But I have used some of the hard pastels and I really developed some of the grasses 
added more flowers with the idea being I want your eye to go here up into the sky and then back around and that is what I did so should I have trashed that piece of paper or should I have rescued it and I think that I'm happy I rescued it and I hope you've enjoyed this this little demo and I hope if you like this channel to subscribe and be sure you get the the most recent videos and I'm happy to share with you so let's paint